I'm Sheldon Kennedy, and uh, it's an honor to be here. I just want to recognize a friend of mine who's here tonight, uh, Anne McCaig, and I also was uh, brought to my attention by a very young lady in the back that in the program, it doesn't mention that uh, I was nominated as a, a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence, which I'm very proud of. So I want to thank that young lady for our Honorable Lois Mitchell for bringing that to my attention. Um, <laughs> Well, I was, uh, I played in the NHL. I played for three teams in the NHL, Detroit Red Wings, Cal Calgary Flames, and the Boston Bruins. I was uh, lucky enough to uh, wear the Canadian flag uh, on, on my jersey uh, for two years. We won the gold medal one of those years. Uh, we also won the, the championship uh, of junior hockey in this country, the Memorial Cup. Um, and I was also sexually abused as a young kid. So <clears throat> a lot of that stuff. Um, if it wasn't for hockey, uh, I wouldn't be able to have the voice that I have today. And uh, a lot of times <clears throat> you wonder, uh, what do you do in certain situations? And I found myself in a situation where uh, you sink or swim. And, and I found myself in a situation where um, I needed to tell my story, thinking <clears throat> I was probably the only one that this ever happened to. And I found out quickly uh, that I wasn't, and I uh, was Canada's Newsmaker of the Year in 1997. And uh, I was reading down the list of people that were also the Newsmaker of the Year, and there was Prime Ministers and, and Gretzky and Lemieux, and I was no, nowhere in that class at all. And then I saw Rick Hansen and Terry Fox, and I thought, well, geez, other great Canadians. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna rollerblade across this country. And uh, so there I went. I only rollerbladed once in my life. It just happened to be 8,500 kilometers. <laughs> so, so I figured, I figured that, uh, you know what? I, I went from thinking that I was the only one in, 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 this, in this world that, that had ever been abused. And we had conversations across this country. We were getting disclosures every day from people. And one of the things that stuck with me is that it wasn't about the, the age, the gender, the, the background, or the, the incident itself. It was about the impact and what we were left with. And it's about making the invisible visible, trying to understand <clears throat> about connecting the dots. If we look at these issues a lot of the times, <clears throat> you know, if we look at you know, addiction. I mean, 72% of individuals that struggle with addiction disclose early childhood trauma. Kids that have been abused are 26 times more likely to experience youth homelessness, 30% higher dropout rates in high school, and the list goes on. And that's what I learned as I skated across this country 20 years ago, and I had a really nice mullet, actually. <laughs> but I felt, right, here's Sheldon. Suicide was a very normal thought in my head. It was the only way I felt that I could shut myself off and shut my head off and and yet I'm rollerblading into these towns and I had a mullet and you know and I was in good shape and you know people have a hard time understanding the impact and I think back then Sheldon's story could clear a kitchen let alone speak at walrus talks today but I think what we set out to do was to and did my desire and not just me there's been many people and it goes back to what uh, Lois was talking about it's about we it's about we desired a better country uh, in this area and how do we best protect our children. And we set out to keep these issues in the forefront and center for long enough for change to happen. And for people and for science and for legislation and for protocols and policies to get caught up to actually shift the way that we do this work from always working at the outer, outer layer of the onion to actually understanding that we have to do a better job here. And I think that uh, for me, the gift has been that, you know, forever, I think sometimes when you're an advocate or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, you're pushing the ball up the hill all the time. And it felt, it's pretty lonely lots of times when you're pushing the ball up the hill. And I think as a country, uh, we've allowed ourselves to be open-minded enough to say we can be better. And I think, <clears throat> to me, that's allowed us to be the only country in the world that has child abuse and, and family violence positioned under a health portfolio, which is, I think, huge. And I think that we have made significant progress. And when I travel around the world, uh, I'm asked to, to speak at different places and, and do different types of work around this stuff. Um, there's no question that we've taken a really devastating, uh, shameful experience, uh, taken Canada's game, 
uh, if you may, and uh, Hockey Man of the Year in Canada's game, uh, and an NHL player, which is a lot of the young boys' uh, dream, and we've turned it into um, <clears throat> something that we can be proud of. And I think <clears throat> that's what I'm so proud of. As a country, <clears throat> it's always let... is that we've got to a place of understanding the significance of this impact and the prevalence of it. And we're making shifts to be the, the best we can be. We, uh, we're really proud of the Sheldon Kennedy Child Advocacy Center um, in Calgary, uh, the first of its kind of, uh, in this country and around the world that I know of, being able to share information the way we do to be able to treat young kids. We've Four and a half years, we've had over 6,200 kids come through our, to, through our center, and I look at that as what a gift we have to turn these kids' lives around. So <clears throat> for me, when the Governor General phoned me up and said, Sheldon, we want to give you the Order of Canada, or Lois called me up and said, Sheldon, we want to invest you in the Alberta Order of Excellence, it was, uh, to me, there's hope. There's hope for the kids. There's hope for people, because I'd be the last guy on that list um, 20 years ago, let me tell you. So, I don't know why I'm so emotional tonight. <laughs> Gee whiz, maybe, maybe that's my desire to stop crying one day. <laughs> I don't know, but it all comes out of gratitude and I'm really grateful I'm here, thank you.